and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Episode number three of South African Wines. I'm just trying to bring awareness to South African Wines. Like I said, Susie and I went there. We love the area. I think they produce some great wines. Not all expensive, but like I said in the last one, it's really disappointing. Not disappointing, that's the wrong word. It's, it's discouraging when people pass by South African wines, when they see a wine that's ranging in the $20 range from ranging in the $20 range, that might be redundant. In the $20 range from South Africa, they bypass it, they go to Napa, Washington, wherever they go. I have no problem with that, but you know, could you at least think about South Africa and their wines? Because they've been doing a great job for a long time long time. So, very interesting. We have two different varietals here. We have a Cab Franc and a Syrah. Syrah, huge plantings of Syrah in South Africa. Not so much with Cab Franc. So I'm very excited to chat with Cab Franc. As you know, I'm a big Cab Franc fan. So I'm super stoked to try this Cab Franc. I've just, we've been just talking about this, but I'll go over it again. 250,000 planted vine acres in South Africa, which is pretty serious. The Western Cape, which is a generalized area like Columbia Valley, that has a lot of different wine regions underneath it. Biggest area that covers a lot of different wine regions in Western, in the Western Cape. So when you see that, you know, and including Stellenbosch, Parle, Franschhoek, we go on and on. Just a reminder, hopefully some of this sinks in. To all of us. There's a lot of mountain ranges in South Africa and they contribute to a lot of diversity in the wines. A lot of different mesoclimates where the wines are different, different soil composition, etc, etc. So very interesting wine growing region. Um, very excited to get into this third episode. This is the RATS. R-A-A-T-S. Dolomite, Cabernet Sauvignon 2019, Stellenbosch, South Africa. This rolls in at $27. Now, admittedly, just saying, uh, I have a pretty big Washington State Cab Franc set, including some from California, and they all roll in at this price range. They do. Some less, of course, but a lot of them roll in right at this price range. So let's try this. Rats. Or do they say rots? Looks like rats to me. Cab Franc, 2019. Stellenbosch. You can sort of see through this, sort of a reddish color. Let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, exactly what you would expect from a Cab Franc. That's exciting. Little nettles. Tomato leaf. Blackberry stem, cherries, getting just a slight hit of bittersweet chocolate, and licorice. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very peppery, very peppery on the finish. The vegetal qualities come through, but not overbearing, which is really cool. And I think if some people shy away from like Loire Valley, France, Cabernet Franc, because, because of the herbaceousness, the vegetal quality of those wines, this has it, but it also has the dark cherry notes, spice, and you know, fairly mild tannins. I'll call them mild. Nice integration, smooth across the palate, tiny hit of grip on the back end. But overall, I think this is a nice segue Cab Franc. For those who don't like Loire Valley, the, the salad bowl Cab Francs from the Loire Valley, I like those, to the more fruit forward style that come from California and Washington State. Washington State has some fantastic Cab Francs. Just saying. 
But there are a couple in Washington State where they're just over oaked mocha vanilla milkshakes. This doesn't go this fresh, balanced, nice cab from. Very impressed with this. $27? Well, you know, that's up to you. But I'm saying it's worth it. Because, I say it's worth it because you get the vegetable qualities, you get the fruit, you get the balanced tannins, good acidity, it's fresh. This would be great. Just saying, great lamb chop wine. Rack of lamb, if you're having lamb. I'd have this with ham. It was smoke, smoky ham. This would be really good. I would have it with steak. Why not? Although it is a little lighter on the side. So I'm, I'm, I'm going all in with lamb on this one. Yeah, it balances between fruit, vegetal qualities, tan lighter tannins, but very solid Cap Franc. Very impressed with this Cap Franc. I'm going to go B plus, A minus. Let's move on. Now we're going into Syrah. They plant a lot of Syrah in South Africa. Got stuck there for a minute. 2019, Excelsior, Syrah. Produced and bottled by the Dr. Wet family in Robertson, South Africa. This rolls in at 11 bucks. I'm excited to try this because the Robertson cab was a surprise to me. $11. Really was. So, super stoked. Super excited to try this one. And I wish I could hit the bucket there, but I didn't. Fairly dark. Again, you can see through it, but it's darker than the Cap Bronc, which you would expect from the Syrah. Let's see what we get on the nose. Kind of a candied currant thing on the nose, which is surprising. Candied boysenberry currant. Very candy. Very interesting. Hints of licorice. I'm getting a little uh, eucalyptus. It's burning my nose a little bit. My nose hairs. 14% alcohol. Getting some bittersweet chocolate on this one as well. Candied boysenberry all day. Let's see what we get on the palate. Interesting. Kind of a smoky boysenberry thing on the palate. Surprised you get the smoke. Maybe a little bit on the nose. Smoky boysenberries. A little bit of that kind of kind of bittersweet but melt chocolate thing going on the palate. A little bit of a but very fresh. Very fresh. Sort of a tarry thing coming on the backside, which is not surprising with Syrah. Syrah can be kind of a tarry flavor profile. I'm getting some black plum notes on the palate, which I didn't get on the nose. A little bit of spice action on the backside. Nice and fresh acidity. I'm really impressed with what the Excelsior can do for the for the money. They have to ship this from Africa to the U.S. Cargo. It's all about production levels, all that. I understand. Lighter glass. But not my favorite Syrah, but pretty damn good for a Syrah at this price point. Just saying. Just saying.
a touch thin, but overall, I think anybody who is looking for a Syrah with that little kind of smoky characteristic thing going on, a little fresh, kind of tannins are structured. I'm impressed. I am impressed with that Syrah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B minus. Saying Excelsior, Excelsior. Wow. Okay, we're gonna step up to the plate here with a. 2017 Reineke Syrah made with organic grapes. This rolls in at $29. Stonebush, once again. College Town, Stonebush. Busy little town. Susie and I had lunch there with somebody. And uh, yeah, very, very busy. Hard to find a parking spot, just saying. Okay, color, again, hedging towards black, red. Oh, oh my. you know what? First thing that came to my mind, chicken noodle soup. With a splash of boysenberry and plum. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Chicken noodle soup, baby. Pour a little chicken noodle soup over your blackberry crumble or your... With a little plum in there. Getting a little baking spice, vanilla, licorice. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is a baby. It's a 17, 29 bucks. I'm saying put it in your cellar for five to ten more years. Good acidity, nice structure, structured tannins, approachable but structured tannins. The acid is nicely integrated. This is everything you want in an ageable wine. Acid, fruit, tannins. It's all there. Spice, spice box on the palate, a little bit of white pepper coming through as well. Nice boysenberry, blackberry notes, a little bit of plum. Some uh, barbecue spice notes as well. The tannins is going to rip on the finish, but it's not out of balance. You could drink this now for sure with a really nice meal, beef bourguignon, um, steak, stews, anything like that. I know we're getting into summer. Not yet. We're in the spring. This weather has been awesome, by the way. But it's fresh, too. It's not heavy. Not cloying at all. It's very well balanced. Nicely integrated stuff here. I mean, we're talking solid, solid, solid Syrah. Almost coat roti-ish. And not getting a lot of blueberry on this one, which is coat roti blueberry. But I like that spiciness, that intensity of fruit, acid, and tannins. Like I said, I, you know, I'm just saying, this is worth experimenting. This is one of those wines where you say, I'm just going to buy a bottle. Stan says, this will age, just buy one bottle, tuck it away for five more years, and then open it up. And I hope you don't come and beat me over the head with the bottle. But I think it'll be a lot better. But I like the spiciness of this one. I like the structure. I like the integration of all of those elements. Even a little licorice and uh, bittersweet chocolate on the finish, which is really cool. like this one a lot. I'm going to go A, A plus on that one. Just, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. 
you know, just so you can see what's coming up. I hope you're enjoying these episodes. And uh, what did I ask? Did I ask any questions on this one? I don't think I need to uh, on this one. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.